said times in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Shut my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? The hell we gonna- uh, Okay guys, welcome back to the channel So today, we're gonna be doing the M52 Oil and filter change Now, my car has decided to throw Vanos codes and I'm going to show you why that is. It goes very misdiagnosed during the oil change and something you really have to look at when you're doing your oil and filter. And also, something else on this engine it is very, very critical for this car to make sure you don't have balance codes and not have rough running when you start back up. So I'm going to show you what you need to look for. I've got the new part here already. We're going to get the car in and then we're going to start changing the oil. And I'm going to show you guys how to check and look if you've got Vanos codes or rough running how to fault find and how to diagnose it and it's usually one thing that caused this on the m52 engine okay guys so as you see here we've now got the m52 engine in and we're going to start doing the video we're going to start going underneath i'm going to show you where the sump's located we're going to drain the oil out of this baby then we're going to come up here to the oil filter what i'm going to do first though is release all the pressure from the cap so it drains back down to the pan because i've just started it to bring it in also going to open the oil filter cap which is right here and let the air just come out so i'm just going to open that like that so you smoke him it's very very hot here in the uk today it's like 32 celsius which i believe is probably about 90 degrees fahrenheit so it's very very hot here so this car is boiling especially because black and all black inside and the same for my m5 it's the same thing as well absolutely roasting in there um now I am going to remove the oil filter cap now, so we're going to go ahead and just release that. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So as you see here guys, this is the oil filter. Now what you're going to want to do is, I don't have this tight anyway, but you're just going to want to unloosen it. As you see there, we have got that unloosened, and you can just let it drain back to the pan. I will link these tools that I'm using in the description in my box below. You just want to make sure you just open it fully, let the oil drain back down to the pan before you get underneath there. As you see, the smoke coming out of there as well due to the heat. And you're just gonna wanna do this. Make sure you do it correctly and make sure you don't break anything in the process. Then you're just gonna wanna unscrew it. Oil pressure's gonna be up because it's just been started. So as you can hear it, you can hear it dropping back down. So that's what we want. Now we've got that set. Now we're gonna go underneath the car. Then I'm going to show you quickly, if you can see, there is a jacking point right here, here, you see all my fingers pointing in the middle of the car, so we're going to jack up the car there, then we're going to go underneath with our 17mm socket and release the sump plug, which I'm going to show you where that's located on this engine, and then we're going to drain the oil out. Okay guys, so the oil sump bolt is located right here. If you don't know if you can see that on the camera, so the okay, right here's a 17 mil bolt. I have changed this numerous times. You can take this cover off, but it's not worth doing. You don't actually have to do it. So we're not gonna. I've got the pan already here as well, which is pull a bit more closer. But we're gonna go ahead and release this bolt and then you're gonna see the oil drain out. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do is just release this. And we're just gonna turn it out, turn the bolt out, which you can see right here, making sure our drain pan. It's situated right underneath because it's going to come out backwards so be aware of that it might go onto the camera as we release the sump washer so we're just gonna do it out slowly and as you see it just went everywhere as it does so this is why you need to be careful guys so as you see there we nearly end up in a right mess Luckily, I had gloves on, so it wasn't the end of all ends, but it could have gone badly. You now there's some bolts in there, in that pan, so I'm gonna have to get it out. But as you see there, that's the oil draining. So as you see there, guys, it's still finishing off draining. So we just went over that to completely drain, and it is nearly finished. Um, I'm glad to say this car isn't burning any oil anymore. At the moment, since my last, um, since my last oil change, I have not had to top the oil once and I've done probably about 3,000 miles. Um, I think since using that Forte oil fortifier has really done the trick for this car. I'm not going to put another one in. I want to see how it goes on its own now since doing that. But I believe it should run perfect. So we are just going to leave this to finish drain down and we're going to go and remove the filter. I've got to put the sump bolt back on. Obviously, 
you're gonna have to get a sump bolt out of that as well because it fell into the pan. It's not a hard job to get out, I've done it many times, just put your glove on and just locate it in there. The door ain't that hot anyway, so we'll just locate it. But as you see in there, the door was actually very clean um, because I cleaned it up off the floor, but it's still leaking out, so I want it all to come out before I put the sump plug back on and start putting everything back together. I want it all to fully just completely clear out of here. There you have it guys, that's how you would drain your oil. And if you want to see the hole, the hole is located there. If you can see it, it's located right there and you see it draining out. That's where the sump washer will go. Um, and you just put it straight back on there. It's 17 mil, just remember that. And don't over tighten it so you can get it off easy the next time round because it doesn't have to be tight. Okay guys, as you'll see here now, it's now started to finish off. And I'm just gonna give it a clean up here in the last bit of the hole. Um, try and clean it up. Stop it all leaking. I think that will do it. Now what we're gonna do is return the sump plug, which has a which I have got a new washer on. I managed to get this out of the sump with a new with a magnet and we got it out. So I didn't have to put my hands in there. Now we're just gonna put the sump bolt back in. As you see, that's in now, so we'll just tighten that up. Now, M52 is always this way where it will leak, so just be aware of that. Just want to tighten it up. And then clean up the area very well. No other oil spillages. And then you just want to tighten the sump plug back up. Like that. Be careful not to over tighten it either. And that's tight enough. So we'll leave that like that. And that's the oil now drained and cleaned. So that's completely done. So now what we'll go to is go to the oil foot. I won't change over the oil foot, but that's how you'll do the sump. Just clean it all up with tissue just through the hole like that, like I've done. Make sure there's no oil leaking anywhere. It's gonna leak down on your floor, which there isn't now. Everything's cleaned all around. Just clean it and that's it. Okay guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and just really take out the oil filter. Now as you'll see here, you'll see them right here. That's the oil filter cap. Now on the oil filter cap, you'll see there's no filter on there. That's because on this cap, the filter was broken. As many of you guys probably know from my recent oil changes, we're gonna take out the oil filter now. And as you'll see, the oil filter, filter is quite crushed in. You'll see right here, it's quite quite crushed in. And as you'll see here as well, the Vanos filter is stuck inside. Now, that's because previously, before I bought the car, someone had obviously broken it, garages usually. And we're gonna now throw this whole cap away. Now, this is the part you have to be careful with on the cap itself. That will cause all your Vanos codes, rough running codes, and misfires. And as you see here, this is the reason why mine's been doing it. It hasn't been doing it so bad, but it's been acting funny. Now look at the state of the filter. And I changed that only, not even 2,000 miles ago, but look at the state of that filter already. Already the way how bad it is. And this is a Bosch one as well. Uh, you guys know I don't use no crap for my cars. But this right here is the actual cause for the reason, for the fault codes. And you know, I've, I've got a new one now. We're gonna be changing it over. But if you are in the process of changing the oil, make sure you check that because that is very, very crucial and vital for your um, Vanos codes and rough running and to make sure you actually change that part um, on your M52. As you'll see here, we've now got a uni one from Vaco, which is this part, no Chinese crap. You guys know I won't use Chinese crap on the car. And as you'll see, this one has the already the O-ring, so we don't need to go changing that. But you also see, if you can see just in there, you also see there's a spring located inside here. Now, this is what mine didn't have was a spring. Now the spring presses down the pressure and locks the cap in. Now this is what you need to make sure you've got, have that spring inside there for it to actually work, the vinyl system itself. So now we've got that new cap, we're gonna go and put the new oil filter on and then that's the job done. We've already got new O-ring on there. So we're not gonna be putting that on. We're just gonna put the cap straight back on the filter. Do remember your rubber O-ring that goes around the filter right here. And make sure you put that on. As you see, goes straight on there. So we've got that on. Now what we're just gonna do is just, I'm just gonna take a bit of the oil there and rub it around here, because you wanna lubricate it so it doesn't get trapped. 
and you don't want to lubricate with anything else apart from oil just make sure of that so now that's done now as you see we've got the new oil filter it's up straight on perfectly then what we're going to do is put it back on like this now then what should happen with this one is it should click down it should just click down and be fine now what we're going to do is just tighten this up a bit give it a helping hand when it's struggling with the new o-ring around the filter So as you see there guys, that's the oil filter now replaced and all tightened up. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is top up the oil on the car to finish this oil service up. So we're gonna put the oil back in. Remember the oil top up on this car is six and a half liters only. Not the nine liters like the M5, hallelujah. Okay guys, so we're just gonna put my funnel in like always. And as you see here, I am using the Shell Helix 5W40, you guys, um, no, I only use that for this car. It's the best oil you can use for the M52, I believe. I've used it all the time with no issues. And now we're going to pour it in. So this will be the first five litres. And then I'll watch it. Just make sure the two litres have gone in. So just top on a bit more. And I think that's about it. So that's all the oil changed on the M52. As you see there now, we've got filled up the oil. We're just gonna start up the car, make sure there's no leaks, and then we'll close this video out. So as I said to you guys, this is the part you must, must check when changing your oil um, and filter because that is critical for the Vanos to control the oil flow going to the Vanos um, solenoids and all the Vanos adjusters as well. Without that filter, it will not advance properly. You will end up killing your timing and you will end up with a jump timing chain as well. Be careful to check that. Um, always, always when you service the car, make sure not to break it either. It's very important. Make sure you've got a spring there. It springs up and down so the oil can come up when it's under pressure. It was, the spring will go up and then let it back down when the car stops for the solenoids as well and the adjusters. So let's go and start this car up now and let's get it running. So as you can hear guys, it's just coming up because I've only just hopped off the oil. So we're just waiting for everything to get up, the cycle. The oil can break down because it's going to be too thick when you first start it. We're going to wait for the oil to get up to temperature, which is what we're waiting for now. Wait for everything to come up and then I'll go and check it on the iDrive, make sure the oil is still to the right level. Um, I'm just going to check, make sure there's no leaks from the new oil filter housing cover, which I don't think there will be. This is the cap that's been tightened. A lot of you are going to say to me about the marks from the oil filter housing cap. Let me explain to you something. There's not much you can do about that when you've got that tool. You can use a, another piece to go on top of it, but it's very hard to get hold of. So it is easier just to use that. And in there, it's a plastic cap. Um, you can put a cloth over it, but it won't grip it very well. So that's why you have to use it like that. And as you see, the car's coming down on temperature. It's idling now perfectly. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna check the eye drive, make sure we're at the correct level, and then I'll come back to on the camera. Okay guys, I'm pleased to report that the car is at the full um, max on the oil level. Everything is running fine. We've been letting it run, letting it take over, letting it come up to temperature and everything is running tickety go. Very happy with it, there's no leak. Make sure you just check back underneath if you want to, make sure nothing's leaking, but you, if you've done everything right, you shouldn't have no issues there. Also, the oil filter cap, make sure that's on correctly, there's no leaks from around the sill anywhere, you'll know you put everything back correctly. And just make sure you check your other oil leaks while you're under here as well for your oil cooler gasket, obviously your oil filter housing gasket, make sure you check for all them leaks at the same time. Obviously then you can replace them if you see any other leaks that are there. But apart from that, this is job done and I'm very okay guys so there you have it I've just shown you now how to change the oil on the M52 engine and I've shown you what to look for for the Vanos codes as well now if you guys do find like I said your oil filter housing cap off for the Vanos unit 
replace it immediately. Don't leave it like I did. Like I said, because it went up throwing codes. Like I say, mine's been like that now for a year and it just decided to start running rough now. Now it's back to full optimum power. I wasn't driving it until I got that cap and until I sorted it. The cap was not expensive. It worked out about 15 pound for the Vaco one and I replaced it. It's an actual proper solid one as well. And it's the one that um, manufacturers recommend as well, which is BMW who recommend that cap for the M52 engine. So I'm glad I've got that sorted. And if this video has helped you, please like this video. And if you ain't subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe. We've got a lot more F2 content coming up on this car, especially, as I said, I've still got it and it ain't gonna be going nowhere. I told you guys, it's a channel car and I plan to keep it and make videos for all you guys. Thank you very much for watching. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.